Hey, I'm Jason Stewart, and in this installment of VFX for the Cut, I want to do a quick computer screen replacement in Media Composer with no plugins. Here we have a shot with some camera movement in it, so we'll use corner pin and corner tracking to take care of it. And to add a little complexity, the girl lifts the book up and occludes part of the screen, so we're going to have to deal with that as well. First, we'll drop the shot into a timeline and label the cut. Always add a version number because in editing, there's never just one version. For this kind of work, I like to go to the Composer pull-down and select Show Single Monitor so I can work in full screen mode. You can click this button to toggle between Source and Record Windows. So the plan for this shot is to use the footage as a plate, then add a graphic layer, composite it on top, then add the footage back on top and rotoscope the book back on top of the composite. Doing this is called creating a holdout mat, so we will hold the book out from the graphic. I'm going to hold Option and click the Move Clip Up button to copy our plate to the next layer. Move Clip Up and Down should be mapped to your up and down arrows as well. Then we can move it to the top. Now I'll drop the graphic I'm using as the fill on V2. The graphic is simply a screen grab of my Avid screen. We can monitor V2 because I don't need to deal with the holdout layer right now. To add the graphic to the plate, I'll use Media Composer's most useful VFX tool, the 3D Warp. Let's take a look at our options inside of the Effect Editor. The 3D Warp tool does have a lot of options, but we're going to focus on the corner pin feature. There are lots of ways to approach this screen track, but let me show you the method I like to use. The first step is to go into corner pin mode, and you'll notice these dots on the corners of our shot. We can begin to move these around to fit our computer screen, but you'll notice that it's difficult to see the plate underneath. Going to the foreground controls will allow us to knock the opacity down to about half so we can see the screen and the plate together. Whenever you're in effects mode, you can hold command on a Mac and click in the window to zoom in. If you need to pan around, option command will bring up the tool for that. We'll use this zoomed in view to place our corners on the first frame of our shot as precisely as we can. Shift command click lets us zoom back out to full screen. It's time to initiate the corner tracking feature. The way I like to do this is to track one corner at a time. I'll turn on the first tracker here. You'll see the yellow tracker appear on screen, and the tracking window will pop up. If you're new to tracking in the Avid, you might not know that this icon will trigger the tracking window and effects that support it. Now I'll move the tracker to the corner of the computer screen. For this type of shot, I'll make the search area of the tracker the smallest it can be without losing the feature. This will help with accuracy. But if you have a shot with more dramatic movement, you might try enlarging the search area if your track fails. Because this shot has subtle motion, I'll change the tracking mode to Fluid Tracker and leave the Track Background option turned on. Once it's ready, hit Start Tracking at Position Indicator. If we feel like the track stayed on the corner, we can add the next track. If there's any slipping, try to make the search area smaller and track again. Now technically you can set all four trackers at once and then track forward, but it might go slower and the accuracy might not be as good, so I like to focus on one at a time. Also, it's a good practice to deactivate the solved trackers before adding new ones so they don't get processed again. Again, it's just a time saver. Once we have solid tracks on all corners, re-enable all the trackers and close out of the tracking window. I think this track is pretty decent, so I'll turn up the opacity to 100% and jump out of the effect editor. Now we'll move on to the holdout layer. Since the book crosses the screen we're replacing, we'll need to rotoscope the offending section on the book and complete the composite. In the key section of the effect palette, you'll find the animat effect. Most Avid editors use this all the time, but not everyone has had to create an articulated roto with it, so we'll go through some of the finer points of the tool. One thing to note as we open the effect editor is, like 3D Warp, there is a tracking section for the animat effect. We won't be using that now, but all good roto and paint artists know that tracking is their secret weapon and can save them hours on a shot. We're going to highlight the poly tool and begin in the middle of the shot where the book begins to cross the screen and draw part of the shape of the book. When you start, the corners that are created with a click will be sharp or cusped corners. But if you drag while placing a point, you will get bezier handles. Since there are some rounded edges on this book, I'll pull some bezier handles out here. Now that I zoom in and try to fine tune the shape, I run into a little problem. With the composite showing below, I have a hard time seeing the true edges of the book and don't know if my points are exactly in the right spot. What I like to do in this case is go into Segment Overwrite mode and highlight my graphic layer. Right-click and select Mute Clip. This will hide the layer for the time being. 
Also, I like to drop a temp color on the V1 plate. It doesn't matter what color really, but make it look different from our footage so we can see what is held out and what is the back plate. You can change the color of the shape for easier viewing. Nah, that actually makes it worse, so let's do a green color. One trick with Bezier handles is that one handle moves the other handle, and sometimes you want to break the connection between them. If you click the handle you want to move, then press the Option key, you can move one handle independently of the other. Also, you can highlight a point and move it around with the arrow keys if you want better control. All right, once this part is drawn, we'll add a keyframe and move forward until the book's movement settles. Now I can jump back and forth between the selection tool, which will move the whole shape, and the rotate tool to adjust the rotation, and the reshape tool to move the independent points. Double clicking on the shape will switch between the selection and reshape tools. The key to a good roto is to move the individual points as little as possible. Let the computer do some of the in-betweening and move big sections at a time. A roto shape that's been overworked begins to flicker or boil, which means the edge is in constant movement. You want to avoid this issue. If you want to grab a few points at once, drag out a lasso starting from inside the shape, and you can grab a few points at a time. Also, you may want to scoot a keyframe's position in the timeline, and for that, hold Option and drag the keyframe to a new spot. The other thing about this book is that I'll need to do two shapes to roto the whole thing since the front and back cover separate. That's pretty easy. We can just create another shape and animate that as well. However, an issue is that the two shapes will share keyframes, making them hard to animate independently. So if you wanted, you could copy your footage to another layer and do another animat for a different shape if that helps. Nobody really wants to watch me roto this whole shape, so I'm going to go clean this up and then we'll take a look at the result when I'm done. Okay, let's see how we did. I think I got the general idea across for this shot. As an editor, I try to keep to the 15 minute rule. If I can achieve the desired effect on a shot in 15 minutes or less, I'll go for it. If it's going to take more time, I'll ask the director or producer if they want me to go ahead with it or save it for VFX. So I wouldn't put any more time into this roto, even though I see a couple messy spots. I'll unmute the graphic layer, pop the color correction off the plate layer, and then do a little rough color correction on the screen to make it sit in the shot more naturally. Okay, today we went over how to do a screen replacement and hold out matte and media composer without any plugins. Future videos will cover doing more complex VFX with the Mocha Pro plugin inside Media Composer. Then we'll travel outside the program when things get more tricky to do our work in After Effects, Blackmagic Fusion, and Cinema 4D. Thanks for watching.